Your goal is to get to the moon, and the groundwork is complete. Now it's time to launch. I'm Travis Rykolopy, the Executive Director of Fit Enable Productions, and I want to welcome you back to Part 5 of the Tell Me to Tuck series. Now, if you're just joining us, please pause this video and go watch the first four episodes so you get all caught up on the discussion and where we are right now. This video will be waiting for you when you get back. Whatever your goal might be, you know that you have to advance towards it and set stages of increasing progress. So just to keep this more fun, we're going to use the analogy of the recent private space agency launches to kind of frame out this issue. Let's say your goal is to get to the moon or Mars or wherever you want to go. Depends on what billionaire you want to be and what cool name you have for your space, space agency. But wherever it is you want to go out in the cosmos, the first thing you need to do is all the work on the ground here on planet Earth. That work is essentially the first stage of your plan for whatever your actual real world goal might be, whether that's losing weight, make, getting a faster 5K or marathon time, getting a promotion at work, improving your relationships, whatever it might be. At first, you need to lay the groundwork in order to make whatever progress it is you need to make. Now that we are our over a third of the way through this 12-week plan, maybe your plan's longer, but you're going to have at first section, could be a third, could be 20%, could be 25%, where you need to lay the groundwork. This is basically your break-in uh, and conditioning time to get you ready to start doing the harder, bigger tasks down the road. If you're losing weight, maybe this is just getting out and walking and starting to add in uh, some occasional running or other higher intensity physical training so that you can run your 5K or marathon at the end of, of your goal training period. If you're wanting to get a faster time, you've, you've laid the, the groundwork where you can at least consistently run a decent time for the distance you want or you're trying to build uh, you've built up a little bit more of a longer distance but now you're able to run that distance at a moderate pace without really breaking a sweat and it's, that is no longer a challenge for you. now in this middle phase of the training plan it's time to launch to the to the next level if you're a space agency you've done the work on the ground you're obviously not ready to get to the moon or Mars yet, but what you can do, you can at least get into orbit of Earth. Now, obviously, there's some controversy over which of the billionaires who launched last month actually made it to Earth's orbit or to uh, the, the legal definition of outer space, but that's not really our problem here. All we need to do is get to the figurative orbit of our goal, and that requires a launch from the groundwork to the next level. Now, this can be a very intimidating phase to, to enter into. But you got to keep in mind, look how far you've already come. In that first phase, you've already done a lot of the hard work of getting out of your initial comfort zone. And remember, we've talked about that before, where it's our comfort zone which really holds us in place and keeps us from moving forward. But in that first four weeks, you've already done a lot of moving forward. You can go back and look at your plan if you need a reminder exactly what you've done. Look at all the days that you've checked off all those exercises or the times you've run or the extra work you've done with your job, whatever it might be, you can see the progress you've made. Look at it and remind yourself, your comfort zone is well, well in the past. That's no longer an issue. You might feel that you're already in a new comfort zone with your initial phase and you're a little scared to start having to increase your intensity, but at least you know you can do that. So what's the next part of this? Well, hopefully it's already in your training plan for how you're going to escalate your efforts. When you initially developed your training plan, you only did that uh, first phase. Well, now you gotta actually build out the rest of it. Uh, hopefully that's already done, but if you haven't, you can at least look at what you've done and you know that if you do that tomorrow, it won't really be that much of a challenge. So you can start building on that. If you're just running a distance say you've, you're, you're able to do a 5k well maybe you're not ready to do it to do a 10k yet outright but you can start building in maybe add another half mile to your run or run your 5k and then do a, a different exercise on top of that maybe it's jumping rope or doing some strength training start adding in complementary things to your plan that will help you build towards whatever your goal might be the thing to keep in mind here is you can't just 
really try to go straight to the moon. You have to make your escalation reasonable because you don't want to, one, injure yourself, which is something that happens a lot when people try to start building up their physical activity intensity. You also don't want to burn out because as you try to build up, you're going to be a lot more tired, a lot more sore. So even if you don't get injured, you could start having some of those uh, excuses start getting their way back in your mind that, oh yeah, I worked out so hard yesterday, maybe I can take a day off. Or man, that was that was rough. My legs are still destroyed this morning. I'm not going to go for my run. Those kind of things can start coming back and start hindering your progress because as we know taking one day off becomes two days and three days and so on and so forth and it just gets harder and harder to get back on track so escalate reasonably you may have heard the story uh, a long time ago from a coach that the British men's cycling Olympic cycling team uh, hired to improve their progress and you know the guys who the, the people who hired this coach are expecting some massive plan of how that you know he's just going to jumpstart the, the the cyclist training and take it you know basically from a one all the way to crank it up to eleven, you know like that. Well, he didn't. He focused on one percent improvement each day. They're going to improve one percent on their their total skill set, whether that's their conditioning technique, just all the things that go into being the best cyclist in the world. And what they they saw over time was that in their training cycle, even though they weren't doing these huge changes uh, to their training plan, the incremental improvements, at, by the time they got to competition, they were able to far outstrip the, the training and the actual race day performance of their competitors. You can keep that in mind. You don't have to double your running. You don't have to double the weights that you're lifting. You don't have to cut the time, your 5K time in half that, that you're trying to run. You can just start building it up slowly. Take, try to take a second off your 5K time today. Try to take another second off tomorrow. If you, with uh, lifting, add, a, add five pounds this week. Don't do tw add 25 pounds, you're just gonna harm yourself. The, but add another five pounds in two weeks. You know, do those incremental changes that make sense for you, for where you are, for what your actual conditioning is. You want to be reasonable with where you are, where you want to go, and what you have to do in that time. You don't want to try to make that goal happen today. The other great thing that comes from escalating the intensity of your training plan in this phase is that it will start to actually show you other areas where you have weaknesses that you need to address. As you try to, try to start running faster, you might find that you have some technique issues that you need to work out. Maybe you need to be stretching more afterwards or doing more of a dynamic warm-up before you run. Maybe you'll find that your gear really isn't up for it. Your shoes might have been okay for a, a moderate run, but they're a little too old and this, the padding has worn out to be really comfortable for a faster run or a longer run. So a lot of things that will sort of come out of the woodwork that you might be surprised about, but now is a good time to address them. If you're trying to do more strength training, as you add weight or you start adding in more complex movements or, or exercises to your routines, you might find those little areas where you have some muscle uh, strength imbalances. You know, we all have that weird asymmetry with our bodies, where you know our dominant arm is really strong and our other one's a little less so, less strong. Or same thing with legs and whatever. Those things will come out a lot more when you're trying to, to increase the weight. And as you add other exercises in, you might find muscle groups that are not developed quite so much that you could really crank out some uh, you could really crank out some bench presses, but some of the other chest exercises, maybe it's like an incline press or a decline press, are a lot harder for you. But maybe you find that uh, incline presses or decline presses are a lot harder for you because they start requiring you to engage uh, the muscles in a different way that you haven't strengthened up properly in your initial phase. And got to keep in mind, this is really a great problem to have. You're learning more about your own body, what you have done and what you need to do. It might be very humbling to find out that you really can't crank out the higher weights or reps or whatever it might be, but it's good to know. You can uh, adjust your plan now if you need to. You can uh, change up your routine if you need to. You can find those things that you need to, to work on 
because ultimately, you know, in the next phase, uh, the final phase of this plan, you're really going to have to crank it up. And if you see those weaknesses now, just imagine how hard it's going to be in that last phase if you don't do the things in this phase to improve on those weaknesses or uh, areas that you need to put a little more attention on. You can see now that if you don't do those, achieving your goal will be not just more difficult, but it could in fact be impossible. As we get closer to that goal, we're going to be continuing to find things that will be hard for us to do, but that we must do. So you must bear in mind that, so you have to keep in mind to do bigger things, you need better skill sets. That th thing you did way back at the start of your training plan, that first step, that first walk, that first run, or that first day at the gym lifting weights, it was a big thing for you at that time. But in the big scope of your whole training plan, it was a little thing. Achieving your goal at the other end is the big thing. And to get from the little thing to the big thing, you're going to have to be continually improving your skill set. Look at any of your big sports stars. Why are they the one who's on the court at the ch the championship game or getting the Hall of Fame uh, recognition as opposed to all the other guys that they were playing middle school or high school basketball with or you know football or swimming whatever it might be. It's a simple reason well why this one particular star is here and the other 9,999 guys aren't. While they all could do the basic skill sets in the middle school leagues well, this one guy then got better at that and was able to do the skill set he needed at the high school level really well. And then he was able to do it in the college level really well and so on and so forth. And over that time, more and more of those other people around him were not able to level up their game at the same way or the same rate as this star was able to. At each stage of his progression towards his goal of being the star player who's getting the Hall of Fame recognition and all the great things that he's strived for throughout his sports career, he was able to master the different skill sets that he was required to at each stage of the pro his progress. No one cares who was the best player in the middle school league way back when. Everyone cares who's the best player at the top of the game. Your own goal progression with the plan you've laid out may not be as grandiose as being the top player in your sport who's getting the Hall of Fame recognition, but it's the same thing. You can lay out, you can see the different phases of your training plan in the same light. Each one requires you to master a new skill set in order to move on to the next phase and succeed at that phase. And then that phase again, you got a new skill set that you need to master in order to move on to the next one. If you want to get to your goal, the big thing at the end, and not be still worrying about being able to do the little thing at the start, you got to level up your game. And if you level up your game, you're going to level up your life. And you'll be able to move on to the bigger and better goals the next go around. But now that we are at the start of the second phase, it is time for you to launch. You've done the groundwork. It's time for you to get in orbit. If you, don't, if you can't get into orbit, you're not going to get to the moon and you're definitely not going to get to Mars. So you need to start building in that escalation to start moving moving on up. If you aren't able to get to orbit or kick off this next phase, that's good information too. Maybe you just need to extend the initial phase longer to get in more of that conditioning. Maybe you need you just need some more miles at your moderate pace in order to get to where you need to be and to increase your mileage in the next phase or increase your pace. Maybe you just need some more time in the gym lifting the lighter to moderate weights or doing more reps, just try to build yourself up to the bigger stuff that you need to do in the future. If you can't get into orbit, that's not a reason to quit. It's just a great reason to focus more effort on doing the groundwork you need to do. Eventually, if you do that, you will be able to launch and get into orbit because there's something really important waiting for you in orbit that we're going to talk about next week with part six of the Tummy to Tuck series, which is the midterm. I'm not going to ruin the surprise for you now, but so tune in next week when that episode drops. If you've enjoyed the content so far, please subscribe to the. If you've enjoyed the content so far, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future episodes of the Tummy to Tuck series or any other Fit Enable videos. And if you found this helpful, maybe someone else in your life will have found it helpful too. So please share it with someone you think it might help them move forward with as well. And as always, thank you for racing with Fit Enable.